Welcome to On Subrogation Live. We are here at the NASP Annual Conference in 2019 in Washington, D.C., and I am fortunate enough to be joined by Mike Markachewski of ARCA. Thank you for joining us, Mike. Thanks for having me. I had to bring Mike down here to talk to us because he just delivered a fantastic presentation on the seatbelt defense and how mm -hmm. useful it can be in subrogation cases. I did. Thank you. So tell us about when is a good time to use a seatbelt defense and how do you know when it's a good time to have a seatbelt defense? Well, the seatbelt defense law states that if your insured hits somebody by accident, you know, but we admit liability usually, and we cause injury to another, the individual that we struck, then you can recover some of the damages that you pay that individual for his injuries if you can show that the seatbelt wasn't worn and it would have made a difference in the outcome of those, those same injuries that they sustained. So the seatbelt defense is a very good tool from the subrogation perspective to reduce how much you have to pay even though it was your insured's fault. So how can you tell whether or not a seatbelt was used? Well, there's a certain number of steps. One, you have to show that the crash was survivable, and that is that the forces were tolerable by a human being. Otherwise, we don't have a case. Um, so once we prove that the forces are tolerable, we take a look at the direction of force. Um, and if it's, a, like for example, a typical frontal crash, then seat belts are designed to prevent the occupant from striking hard objects in the interior of the vehicle, even with an airbag. So those are perfect types of cases um, that um, I can show, if I can show that the restraint system for that individual size, um, had it been worn, would have prevented the contact that that person sustained when he struck the interior, or she. Okay, and by having the seatbelt on, that would have been prevented. And I know in your presentation, you had um, some nice photographs showing, for example, a uh, pattern on the windshield from where you can see that an individual had struck his head against the windshield. And there's a distinct pattern there. Yes. yes, yes. And then you took some measurements in that particular case, and um, mm -hmm. you actually measured with another comparable human being sitting in the mm -hmm. same style car from that person to the windshield to demonstrate that that person could not have struck the windshield in that way and made that pattern had they been restrained by a seatbelt. That's exactly correct, yeah. And I know you actually went in and did all of that. So you had to go and find a comparable vehicle and you um, found an individual who was comparable mm -hmm. in size and, uh, and actually got in and did the dirty work with the measuring tape and everything and got it done. Sure, that's the fun part of the job. <laughs> I'm just showing how far a person can move, a surrogate we sometimes call it, within a vehicle given a, a given crash force. That's great. And then, so after that, then you went out and uh, you referenced several pieces of research that you're familiar with mm -hmm. that demonstrated under all these different circumstances at what speed a vehicle could hit another object or what kind of force uh, these seatbelts would prevent that injury at. Exactly. Um, well put. Um, basically, the studies that I referenced um, are showing people on how far they move for a given crash speed. So if I calculate, for example, a 15 mile an hour crash, I can go back and look at several pieces of research, research that show me, for a given size person, how far their head would move, for example, um, in that 15 mile an hour crash. And if I can show that that head wouldn't reach the windshield with a seatbelt on, then I've just proved your case. And back to your original point then, you had some other examples of rollover cases. And uh, you showed us that in some of those rollover cases, the seatbelt defense is not going to be very useful. That's correct. And that was because uh, in some of those rollover cases where you've got roof crushed, the roof is going to come all the way down. So even if the individual had been belted, that seatbelt was not going to prevent any damages. Correct. When it comes to uh, older vehicles, the seatbelt defense law, that is showing that a person, had they been belted, would not have been injured when a roof crushes all the way down to, for example, the belt line, is not a good seatbelt defense case. So I wouldn't take those. And then you contrasted that, because I know you asked the audience, uh, would a seatbelt defense work in a rollover? And my initial reaction was absolutely not, mm -hmm. assuming the roof crush. But I was glad to see that you had examples of several newer model vehicles sure. where it absolutely would work because uh, they there's not as much roof crush or almost no roof crush in some of those newer models. That's true. And our federal standards have changed to reflect stronger roofs over time. So newer vehicles are much stronger than they used to be with regards to roof strength. So it's becoming more and more survivable. There's still a few vehicles out there that have problems. Um, but in the older vehicles, for example, like I showed you earlier, um, we had some significant problems where a seatbelt wouldn't have made much of a difference. Where nowadays, as long as you preserve the interior space, your ride-down space, as they call it, the seatbelt can do its job and prevent impact inside the car. 
Wow, wow. And I know that the videos and the research that you were showing were very compelling, and you've had really good experience with juries with this. I have, personally, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, giving this kind of testimony and presenting this kind of evidence, uh, you've been able to protect the client from excess damages that they otherwise would have had to pay without the seatbelt defense. Very much so, in states that use, use the seatbelt defense law which is about 17 states that use it. Not every state uses the seat belt defense law, mm -hmm. um, but the most popular ones for me, being New York and New Jersey, Florida, California, Ohio occasionally, mm -hmm. um, are, are big seat belt defense states for me. That's great, that's great. And I know um, there was a question towards the end of the presentation that I thought was really interesting, or rather your answer was really interesting, about are there seat belts that don't work as well for a seat belt defense? Mm -hmm. And so you were talking about some of the older model seat belts and why they're really bad for people. Sure, some of the older ones and some cars that still had some um, just not that long ago, and that is the lap belt only, for example. Mm -hmm. Just a lap belt without the shoulder harness portion can be a dangerous restraint system in certain crash scenarios and can actually induce injuries in a crash. Um, they used to call it the seatbelt syndrome. Um, mm. There was actually a name for it mm -hmm. because of the lap belt only type restraint and the jackknifing and the submarining motion of the body that can occur with that kind of belt. Other belts, for example, were the passive restraint systems in the 90s um, and in the late 80s in which they had motorized shoulder harnesses um, or door-mounted restraint systems, which could create problems because of either poor geometry or, in the example of the motorized shoulder belt, people forgetting to wear the manual lap belt. Right, mm. right. So they were only wearing half of the restraint system. Exactly right. Yeah. Well, and I think that was maybe the most important lesson that we should have all taken from your presentation is that, above all else, none of these seatbelts work unless you wear them. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, Mike, I want to thank you so much for taking the time with us this afternoon and for giving such a great presentation. I think we all learned an awful lot. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We hope you will join us again soon on Segregation.